Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where you get the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. I'm gonna level with you. I'm running out of unique intro clips to throw here. So like magic, commander, soul ring, tribal decks, buzzwords, you get the idea. I guess it's a tribal week since there's three tribal decks here and I didn't even realize that until I started typing up the script for this. But anyway, let's see what the Smooth Brain crew brought to the table this week while I go think of something original for next week. First up is Cameron Wilhelm, the Rock Cleaver. This Demir deck is a zombie tribal deck, hoping to flood the board with an army of dead and overpower his opponents. His starting hand has a Tainted Isle, Exotic Orchard, Wayfarer's Bobble, Pyre of Heroes, Wand of Orcus, Village Rites, and Black Market Connections. Next up is Jason or Aura, Skyclave Hierophant. This Aura's up deck is Cleric Tribal, using Aura as a value recursion piece and a combo enabler for infinite sacrifice shenanigans, you know, typical Jason tomfoolery. He keeps a hand with two planes, Pyre of Heroes, Agadim's Awakening, Path to Exile, Midnight Reaper, and Glorious Protector. Our third player today is Chandler on Admiral Beckett Brass. This Grixis deck is all about pirates, hoping to play some cool pirates with some cool effects and do pirate things. Yar matey or whatever they say. Chandler keeps a hand with Castle Lockdwain, Watery Grave, Volcanic Island, Lightning Greaves, Kindred Discovery, Reflections of Lajara, and Hostage Taker. Last is Logan on Lagrilla, the Magpie. This brave soul is breaking the tribal deck norm this week with his band deck that focuses on blinking creatures for value with some combo craziness thrown there somewhere. His starting hand is a tropical island, a plains, nature's lore, finale devastation, source to plowshares, smothering tithe, and a karmic guide. We're about to hop right into the game, but before that, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We post new gameplay videos every week, so you don't want to miss it. Links to the deck lists, our social media, our Patreon, our podcast channel, and our public Discord server are in the description. Our channel is also partnered with Dragon Shield, so if you're looking to pick up any new sleeves or magic related products, check out our affiliate link in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. Looks like Jason wins the die roll. He'll play a basic planes and pass to Chandler, who will play a tap watery grave and then pass to Logan. Logan plays a tropical island and then passes to Cameron. Cameron is the only one with a turn one play with Tainted Isle into Wayfarer's Bobble, and then he'll pass. Now on Jason's turn, he'll play a Fetid Heath, and then we'll tap for two to cast Pyre of Heroes, then pass to Chandler, who will play a Castle Lockthwain, and then tap for two to cast Lightning Greaves, and then he'll pass. Now on Logan's turn, he'll play his Plains, and then we'll tap for two to cast Nature's Lore. He declares he's going to go find his Spar's headquarters, and will pass to Cameron while searching. Cameron plays an Exotic Orchard, and then we'll crack his Wayfarer's Bobble to go find a Swamp to the Battlefield, and then passes to Jason. Jason will play another Plains, and then we'll tap for three to cast Righteous Valkyrie, and then pass the turn to Chandler. Who will play his Volcanic Island as land for turn, then we'll tap for two to cast Captain Vargas Wrath. He'll then equip him with the Lightning Greaves, and then swing for one at Logan. Chandler will then pass the turn to Logan, who doesn't have a land drop, so he casts the Finale of Devastation, X is equal to one, and he'll find Birds of Paradise to the Battlefield. And then he passes the turn to Cameron, who also doesn't have another land drop, so he'll cast Black Market Connections and pass to Jason, who makes his land drop by playing Agadim the Endercrypt, and he'll pay three life to have it come in untapped. He'll then tap for one to cast a Soul Warden, and I'm just gonna let you guys know, this is a very heavy life gain game, and not even just for Jason. So to save my sanity and your time, I'm not gonna announce every Soul Warden trigger. I'll just be marking it on the life totals. Moving on, Jason will cast a Midnight Reaper, and then we'll move to combat and swing for two in the air at Cameron, and then passes the turn to Chandler, who unfortunately misses his fourth land drop, and literally can't do anything, so he'll pass the turn to Logan. Logan still doesn't have another land drop, however, he does have a Smothering Tithe, which he will cast. The turn is then passed to Cameron, who will immediately pay six life to his Black Market Connections to get all three benefits. Smothering Tithe will trigger on his draw step, and for this draw, and he doesn't pay for either of them. He'll then play an Otawara as land for turn, and then he'll cast his commander, Wilhelt. He then moves to his end step, and will sacrifice the Changeling, drawing a card, and making a 2-2 Decayed Zombie. And again, will not pay for Smothering Tithe. He then has to discard a card, and then the turn is passed to Jason, who will pay for Smothering Tithe. And then we'll play an Isolated Chapel as land for turn. He'll then pay 2 and activate Pyre of Heroes to sacrifice his Soul Warden. He'll find Dawnbringer Cleric to the battlefield, destroying Logan's Smothering Tithe when it enters. And he'll draw a card and take a damage to his Midnight Reaper. But that gets negated by the Righteous Valkyrie life gain trigger. Jason will then move to combat and will swing 3 at Logan and 2 at Cameron, and they both just take it. The turn is then passed to Chandler, who begs for his third land drop, but unfortunately he isn't able to find it. But he does find something he's able to cast. A silly little monkey named Ragavan! After the monkey resolves, Chandler will equip the Lightning Greaves to it, and he'll swing it at Logan, along with Vargas. When Ragavan connects, Chandler will make a treasure, and Logan will exile Temple Garden. And then the turn is passed, and Logan starts off with an Arcane Signet, 
Then we'll tap for three to cast a Soul Herder. Then we'll move to a Zen step and blink Birds of Paradise, gaining Soul Herder a counter. Logan will then attempt to pass a turn, but Cameron stays on instep and Village writes his Decayed Zombie, drawing two cards. Now on Cameron's turn, he'll pay one life to get a treasure to Black Market Connections. Then he'll play Urborg as land for turn. He'll then cast a Necro Duality, which is absolutely terrifying in his deck. And then we'll cast an Undead Augur, and he'll get two of them when it enters the battlefield. He'll then move to his end step and sacrifice the copy of it to draw a card to Wilhelt, and then we'll draw two and lose two to the Augurs, and he'll also get a 2 2 Decayed Zombie. He'll then pass the turn and has to discard two cards. Now on Jason's turn, he'll immediately activate his Pyre of Heroes to sacrifice Dawnbringer Cleric. He'll draw a card and take a damage to Midnight Reaper, and then finds Timna the Weaver to the battlefield and he'll gain two back to Righteous Valkyrie when she enters. He'll then move to combat, and we'll swing three at Chandler, and two in the air at Cameron, and they both just have to take the damage. Then on his post-combat main phase, Jason will pay two life to draw two cards. He'll then cast a Zulaport Cutthroat, and a Selfless Spirit, which is a Cleric, so Righteous Valkyrie trigger. He'll then just pass the turn to Chandler who still can't find that fourth land drop, but at least he can tap for four now and cast Breaches. After this, he moves the Lightning Greaves over to Breaches, and then we'll move to combat. He'll swing Ragavan at Logan, and Breaches at Jason. Nobody wants to lose their creatures by blocking, so they both just take the damage. Chandler chooses to resolve the Ragavan trigger before the Breaches triggers, so he'll make a treasure, and Logan exiles an island. Then, with Breaches, Jason exiles a Swamp, and Logan, Authority of the Consoles. Now, unlike Ragavan, Breaches says you can play the card. So, Chandler will play Jason's Swamp as land for a turn, by running off and finding a Swamp of his own, because this is a webcam game, and then he'll sacrifice a treasure to cast Logan's Authority of the Console. And this is another one of those ones that I'm not going to announce every trigger. Continuing on, Chandler will pass the turn to Logan, who will start off by tapping for 5 mana and casting Abdel Adrian. He chooses to exile his Birds of Paradise and Arcane Signet, then makes two Soldier Tokens. Soul Herder also gets a counter, and then he'll move to his end step and blink Adrian. So everything returns to the battlefield, but then he'll re-exile the Birds of Paradise, getting him another Soldier and then two more counters on his Soul Herder. After this, the turn is passed to Cameron, who will pay one life to BMC to make a treasure. He'll then play an Unclaimed Territory as land for turn. Can you guess what creature he names? He'll then tap for two to cast his own Pyre of Heroes. He'll then activate the Pyre of Heroes to sacrifice Wilhelt, getting a 5-drop zombie. Thundead Augur trigger. That 5-drop zombie is going to be a Noxious School. Necro Duality will make it get a copy, so he gets a total of 3 triggers from this. One from the first one entering, and then two from the second one entering. So everything is supposed to get minus 3, minus 3. Jason will respond by sacrificing his Selfless Spirit. Yes, he knows it won't save anything, but Midnight Reaper will trigger, and so will Zulaport Cutthroat. The three triggers will then go through. When the first one goes through, Zulaport Cutthroat will trigger, and so will Midnight Reaper and then the rest go through, killing Timna and Breaches. Another Midnight Reaper trigger. And still not done, Cameron will then cast a Death Baron, Necro Duality makes an additional 1, and then everything gets an additional minus 4, minus 4. And so this will wipe all non-zombies from the battlefield, and there's a Midnight Reaper trigger. And since each minus 1, minus 1 is an individual trigger, when Adrian dies, the Birds of Paradise will re-enter, and then just die. After this, Cameron moves to combat, and will swing his Decayed Zombie at Chandler for 4. It'll sacrifice at the end of combat, and Undead Augur will trigger. After this, the turn is passed to Jason, who plays a Swamp as land for turn, and then he'll drop an Ashnod's Altar. After this, he'll foretell a card. We all know what it is. Jason will then just pass to Chandler, who finally finds another land drop in Otawara, but then he'll just pass the turn. And Logan, who's just trying to recover his board, will cast a Karmic Guide, returning Soul Herder to the battlefield. Logan will then move to instep and then target Karmic Guide with his Soul Herder's ability, but Jason will respond with a Path to Exile, getting rid of the guide. Soul Herder still gets a counter, and then Logan will find a Plains to the battlefield tap, then pass the turn to Cameron, and on the beginning of his pre-combat main phase, Cameron will pay 3 life to make a treasure and draw a card. He'll then play a Swamp as land for turn, and then he'll tap for 2 to activate Pyre of Heroes, sacrificing his token copy of Death Baron. His Augur will trigger, and then he'll search his library. The card he finds is an undead war chief, trying to buff up his zombies so he can deal some serious damage. Two Noxious School triggers and a Necro Duality trigger. Cameron decides to resolve his Necro Duality trigger first, but Chandler has a response, and he'll flash in a Crafty Cut Purse. This definitely takes Cameron by surprise, and the table all has a good laugh. And so after all the ETB triggers resolve, Chandler's Cut Purse will die, but he now has an Undead War Chief. And it did actually ensure Cameron does a little less damage this turn. Cameron will then move to combat, and he'll send 11 damage at Jason, and 6 at Chandler. And they both just take it. Post combat, Cameron will tap for 5 to recast Wilhelt, and when Necro Duality triggers, Chandler gets the copy. Cameron will then move to his end step and decline his Wilhelt trigger. Still on end step, Jason will sacrifice his Midnight Reaper to Ashnod's Altar for 2 mana, he'll draw a card and take a damage, and then he'll flash in his Glorious Protector, which was foretold. Cameron then has to discard a card, and then the turn is passed to Jason, who will start off with Naganjo as land for turn. He then decides it's time to cast his commander, Ura. 
He'll then drop a Grave Pact. Cameron says this is no bueno, so he'll sacrifice his treasure to a swan song it. The Grave Pact will be countered, and Jason makes a 2 2. After this, Jason will move to combat and swings for 3 in the air at Cameron. Post combat, Jason will sacrifice his birds for 2 colorless mana, and then he'll use it to cast an Altar of Dementia. He'll then sacrifice his protector for 2 colorless mana, and this will trigger his commander, returning Righteous Valkyrie to the battlefield. He'll then use that 2 floating colorless to activate Pyre of Heroes, sacrificing the Righteous Valkyrie. His commander will return Dawnbringer Cleric to the battlefield, and then he'll search for a Yawgmoth to the battlefield, and then Dawnbringer Cleric's ability will destroy the Necro Duality. He'll then sacrifice the Dawnbringer Cleric to Yawgmoth, paying a life, and putting a counter on Cameron's Warchief, and then he'll return Soul Warden to the battlefield. Logan sees what Jason's doing, so he decides to help out, so he casts the Swords to Plowshares, targeting Death Baron. This will exile it, and Cameron will gain 4 life. Jason will then activate Yawgmoth again, sacrificing his Soul Warden to put another minus 1 minus 1 counter on Cameron's Warchief. This is enough to kill it, and then Undead Augur will trigger. Will Help will also trigger, giving Cameron a Decayed Zombie. When that enters, there will be two Noxious School triggers, but it doesn't kill anything. After this, the turn is passed to Chandler, and he'll start off by moving his Lightning Greaves over to Will Help. He'll then tap for 5 mana and cast Angrath the Flame Chained. He'll immediately downtick him to steal Cameron's Undead Augur, and then he'll move to combat. He'll turn everything sideways at Cameron, and it's a total of 13 damage. Chandler will then move to end step, and he'll sacrifice the Undead Augur with Will Help, drawing him 2 cards and losing him 1 life. He also makes a 2 to Decayed Zombie and tells Cameron to suck it, he's the better zombie deck. After this, the turn is passed to Logan, who will immediately cast Lagrella. Her ETB will trigger, and the first thing he takes is Cameron's token copy of Noxious School. He'll then take Jason's commander, and then he'll take the only thing he can target on Chandler's board. After this, the turn is passed to Cameron, who pays one life to Black Market Connection since you have to choose one. He'll then play a Snow Island as land for turn, and then we'll cast a Grave Titan, which by the way isn't a zombie, but it does make two zombies. And when they enter the battlefield, Noxious School will trigger twice. He'll then activate Pyre of Heroes, sacrificing Wilhelm again, poor guy, and he'll find a Grey Merchant of Asphodel to the battlefield, draining everyone for 7 life. Noxious School will trigger again, and this will kill Lagrella, returning Jason his commander. Cameron will then move to combat, and will swing a 2-2 Decayed Zombie at Jason, and then it'll die at the end of combat. After this, the turn is then passed to Jason, who immediately moves to combat, and will swing 2 at Engrath, and 3 at Chandler. Post combat, he'll cast a Fiend Hunter, exiling Cameron's Grey Merchant of Asphodel, but in response to the trigger, he'll sacrifice it. This means the Grey Merchant will be permanently exiled, and he sacrifices it to Yagmoth, so he'll lose a life draw card and put a counter on Noxus Ghoul. His commander also triggers, and he returns Dawnbringer Cleric, and he is so tired of this authority of the consoles, he blows it up with the ETB trigger. He'll then play an Ancient Tomb as land for turn, and uses its mana to activate Pyre of Heroes, sacrificing the Dawnbringer Cleric. His commander's ability will return Soul Warden to the battlefield, and then he'll find Priest of Gix to the battlefield with Pyre of Heroes. When it enters, he'll get 3 black mana. He'll then sacrifice the priest to his altar, targeting himself to make him mill 3, and then he'll return Dawnbringer Cleric, blowing up the black market connections. He'll then use two of his black mana to cast and equip Skull Clamp to his Dawnbringer Cleric. He dementias the Cleric, targeting himself to make himself mill 2 and draw 2. It's at this point that Jason asks the rest of the table if their decks have anything in it that cares about Graveyard Order. They all say no, so from now on he's going to split his graveyard into a pile of stuff that might matter, and stuff that definitely won't matter. Continuing on, he uses his last black mana to equip Skull Clamp to his Soul Warden, and he'll draw two cards when it dies. Then he'll cast a Soul Ring. After this, he'll cast an Inspiring Overseer, drawing a card and gaining a life when it enters. He then clamps it, and when it dies, he'll return Dawnbringer Cleric to the battlefield, gaining two life, and then he'll draw two cards. He'll then sacrifice Dawnbringer Cleric for two mana to Ashnod's Altar, returning Soul Warden to the battlefield, and then he'll sacrifice Soul Warden to gain two mana again, then he'll tap for a black and a white, and then cast Life Insurance with one colorless floating. He'll then sacrifice Yagmoth for two colorless mana, losing life, getting a treasure, and then returning Priest of Gix to the battlefield, getting him yet another three black mana. With three colorless and three black in his mana pool, Jason decides now's a great time to drop Bolas' Citadel. He'll then sacrifice his Priest for two colorless mana, and he'll lose a life and gain a treasure. His commander will also bring back Dawnbringer Cleric, which will gain him two life. After this, he casts the Talisman of Hierarchy with his Ashnod's mana, then will dementia himself by sacrificing Dawnbringer Cleric, causing him to mill one, and then he'll bring back Soul Warden. He'll also lose a life and gain a treasure. After this, he'll pay two life to cast an Orzhov Signet off the top of his library. He'll then pay three life to cast a Demon's Disciple, causing everybody to sacrifice a creature. Jason will sacrifice the Cleric to itself, losing a life and getting another treasure, and then he'll bring Dawnbringer Cleric back to gain life. 
Not liking the top of his library, Jason will sacrifice his Soul Warden to alter a Dementia to Millicard. Insurance triggered. He then pays two life to cast Grand Abolisher from the top of his library. Then we'll pay three mana to cast Tabarax. Then we'll pay three life again to cast Grim Horror Sphex. Then pays one life to cast Malakir Rebirth on his commander. Then we'll sacrifice his commander to alter of Dementia and stacks his triggers to mill three first, draw a card. Then he'll return Righteous Valkyrie to the battlefield, and then the Malakir Rebirth ability will resolve. Life Insurance will also trigger, and so will Righteous Valkyrie when his commander re-enters. He'll then cast a Lunark Veteran for one mana, and then will sacrifice Tabarax to make himself mill three cards. Triggers, and then Uro will return Selfless Spirit to the battlefield. He'll then mill himself with Dawnbringer Cleric, triggers, and he'll return Soul Warden to the battlefield. He then mills himself with Soul Warden, triggers, he'll then equip Selfless Spirit with Skull Clamp, and there's a lot of triggers, and he returns Soul Warden again. He'll then cast a Victimize, sacrificing his Soul Warden and returning Taysa Karlov and Zulaport Cutthroat to the battlefield. Even more triggers! He'll then cast Reanimate, returning Yogmoth to the battlefield, then equips Grand Abolisher with Skull Clamp, and then we'll sacrifice Grand Abolisher with Ashnod's Altar, getting him 2 mana and double triggers thanks to Taysa. With all the cards he drew from this, he finally finds the last piece of his combo, Bone Collar Cleric. The table knows they're already dead, but Jason's going to demonstrate this combo for you viewers at home. He starts by sacrificing Yogmoth, which will get Priest of Gix back to the battlefield. Priest of Gix will make him 3 black mana when it enters the battlefield, and then he'll use that mana and 1 additional either from Ashnod's Altar or Life Insurance to activate Bone Collar Cleric's ability to return Yogmoth to the battlefield. He'll then sacrifice Priest of Gix. Uru will trigger, returning the Bonecaller Cleric to the battlefield, and then he'll sacrifice Yogmoth again to get Priest of Geeks back to the battlefield. And thanks to Zulaport Cutthroat, he can continue this loop until everybody is dead. So that's it. That's the game. Everyone's dead or they conceded. The game's over. So scram. Get out of here. Also, congratulations, Jason. That was a really cool win. Well, everyone, there you have it. That is the game, and it was really cool. Some players might have been a little behind at the beginning, but they were able to catch up and still do some cool things. Cameron's zombie deck was really scary, and Jason's combo was awesome. But yeah, that's all for today. Be sure to check out all our links in the description, and while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's all for today, guys. Have a smooth one.